Hey kids, welcome to a lesson 10, building an app, Color Sleuth, number 14. Challenge, pick a way for the game to end and implement it. Your challenge now is to add some code completely on your own. Use what you've learned so far and Alexis and Michael's discussion to help you. This is the last programming level. Make all changes and additions to the program that you want here. When you hit done, hit submit, because I get to see it. The goal, add code that provides a way for a game to end in which switches to a game over screen, shows which player won by showing player one label or player two win label. We've provided game over screen as part of the template for this project. Switch to design mode to take a look at what's there. We have a couple suggestions here. If you're stuck for ideas, try to implement the end game condition of first to 10. First player to reach a score of 10 wins. You should use the, the suggestion from the discussion to add a function like check game over and call it from check correct. And we have a little extra options here. We'll come back and look at this at the end once we are done. What we're doing here is we're pretty much going to set our game to game screen over, and we have to make some conditions to see if player one or player two wins. Whew, sounds like a lot of work, but I know we can do it. Let's go ahead and look at the code. We have done projects like this before, and leading up to this, we're pretty much gonna repeat the same steps. Really what we have to do is to create another function which is going to be game screen over. And then we have to call that function. Well, what are we gonna start off with? Let's start off with a new function here. And this function is going to be called check game over. So we're gonna do check game over. And within this, there's going to be an if and else statement. We want to know if one thing happens, this is going to happen, else something else is going to happen. Let's take care of our first one here. Let's try to implement the end game condition of first to 10. Well, how are we going to do that? We're going to create a variable. So P1 score, if that is going to be greater than or equal to 10, we want the game to be over. Or though, so we're gonna drag in or feature into here, or if player two score is greater than or equal to 10, we want something else to happen. That's my first condition. Since it's an or, only one of these two has to be fulfilled. At this point, if one of those two things happen, we want to set the screen to what? Well, the screen is game over. So we want to set it to this screen over here. And that's going to mean game score over. Now that is only part of it, because if you look at my game screen over here, we have two elements here, player one wins, player two wins. And what we need to do is either hide or show one of those elements depending on that. Well, how am I gonna do that? Well, I'm gonna nest my statement. So I'm gonna do another if statement here. And this one is going to say if P1 score is greater than P2 score, if that's happening, we want to show element. And the element here is, if we go to our design, player one win label. So we want to show that element. Else, what we want to do is we want to show element. And in this case, it isn't player one win label, it's player two win label. This case, if player one score is over 10 or player two score is over 10, then we will set the screen to game over screen. And then we nested this in here. 
if player one score is greater than player two score, we are going to show the element player one wins label. Else, we are going to show element player two wins label. And over here, we have some, these haven't been declared. Well, let's just put these in some quotes here and that will take care of that. We still have one thing to do though. It's saying, hey, this hasn't been declared yet. So we have to declare our check game over here. Well, where are we gonna show that at? If we go up here to our check correct, we have our set board, switch our player. Well, let's say we want to do our check game correct, then set the board, then switch the player. So it's automatically always checking to see if someone wins. This makes sense in my head. Let's try out this code. I'm gonna hit run. And I'm just gonna keep picking the right color here, even though this is really hard for me until we get up to 10. We could have made this a smaller number for, um, ooh, I don't know what this one is. For our testing purposes, and you can see how many I'm getting wrong here. I am not a good color picker-er, but we're getting close. I think that's that one. Woo! I'm starting to get nervous here, kids. Here's the big one. Player one wins, player two wins, but they're both highlighted. Really, we have to show one element and hide another element. So let's go ahead here and Let's change that up. So show element player one wins, and we are going to do hide element. And let's just copy this one down here of player two wins label. We have to do this in reverse down here. So we hide element. And in this one, this is going to be a player one label. Let's make this a little easier for us. Let's just do five right here so we're not clicking all day. Now that it's set to five, let's go ahead, reset, run, and try again. One, two, three, four. Not doing very good here. Well, that's a tough one. Ooh. Maybe I should have made this number one. I'm not doing too good job, kids. Oh, we're one away. There we go. Player one wins. Player one is correct there. So it looks like our code now is working the way we wanted it to. This seems like it's working pretty well. So we got our first to 10 wins here. We are at five. Let's go ahead and reset this back though. And let's see what's the above and beyond things we can do here. Well, we can add a start button to the screen, which should reset everything and go back to the gameplay screen. We can add a welcome screen that explains the rules and invites the players to start the game. And we can make the game more difficult by doing uh, clutters that are maybe every five or 10 off instead of the 20 we're doing now. Or we can make the difficulty variable where you can generate a random number between five and 20 that adds to the RGB value so we don't even know what it is there. I'm gonna cover all these above and beyond in a separate video here, but I just wanted you to make aware that there is a video out there to do this. This though is all we needed to do for this project. If you are struggling just to get this done, this is a great place to stop. But I have some excellent coders in class, so I am expecting you to go through these above and beyond. And if you have trouble with that, please check out that video. Looking back up here, I think we've done all of the requirements for this lesson. We went ahead and switched to a end game screen and we showed which player won by hiding or showing a label. Again, there is some above and beyond that is covered in a, another video. I hope you check that out. But for this, this is all that we need to do. 
On this example, there's nothing for code to check. Once you hit submit, it's going to come to me for grading. If you make an error, please just email me. I can unsubmit it and you can work on it again. I am really excited to see what you're going to do for me, kids. Good luck. And if you have any questions, please ask. I know this was a hard lesson, but I know you've done a great job. All right. Can't wait to see what you got, kids. Good luck.